Hey guys, Ron here, and welcome back to another installment of Pokemon Type Swap. This time I decided I was going to make some regional forms that could work for both my own fan-made future region and the Paldea region of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. You guys know by now that instead of swapping Pokemon into random types that obliterate the entire design and concept of a Pokemon, I'm going to make sure to give these Type Swap regional variants backstories and make them actually work in the Pokemon world. And make sure to check out the previous part of mine to see some surprising regional forms like Dark Milotic and Fairy Phantom. I also want to make sure you know that if you support me on Patreon or become a member, you get a link to my Patreon and member Discord, where I give you access to the high quality, backgroundless images of the Pokemon I make. Maybe that offer sounds good to your ears. At the very least, click the notification bell to know when the next art video comes out. Let's begin. So when I first saw the map of Paldea, the first location that stood out to me was this gloomy looking bamboo forest. At least it looks like that to me. And I'm a big fan of bamboo forests, so I thought, wouldn't it be appropriate to finally showcase a native Pangoro? What if the Pangoro we see in Kalos is not the original Pangoro? It is more rowdy because its diet is more omnivorous, while the Pangoro in Paldea exclusively eat bamboo and are way more relaxed because of this. They also have plants growing on their back because of their sedentary life. They'll be grass fighting because when they're serious, they can still bust a move and have a unique fighting style using a bamboo shoot as a bow staff. Like all my type swaps, I'm beginning by tracing the proportions because most regional forms are in the same exact pose as the original official art. Except for this one, because I cannot lie, we're simply making a sitting Pangoro. It'll have droopy eye patterns like real pandas, its hair will be more flowy instead of spiky, and it'll be totally chill. Its fur coat tail will be uh, wispier and made of plant life as well. Picture sloths in real life that can become green because they barely move and moss starts growing on their fur. The rest of the body is literally the same, but he's holding a bamboo bow staff. A bamboo staff. And then I spent like 15 minutes trying to determine the perfect color scheme. I don't know how cool or warm the tone of the green should be. I naturally lean toward a cooler tone. I naturally lean toward. I naturally lean toward cooler toned green. That is so hard to say. I naturally lean towards cool to I, I, I naturally lean towards cooler toned green. But the personality would be conveyed better with a warmer green. In the end, it's very neutral. Here is Pangoro, the placid Pokemon, a fighting grass type. Pangoro can be found lounging in the bamboo forest of Paldea. Its diet consists almost entirely of bamboo, so to compensate for the lack of some nutrients, Pangoro must stay still and meditate for a majority of the day in order to conserve energy. This results in a calm nature and lack of anxiety in Paldean Pangoro. The only thing that angers them is the sight of the weak being taken advantage of. They do not tolerate bullying. If confronted with a bully, they will immediately rise from their leisurely rest and promptly wield their bamboo staff. They're greatly skilled in utilizing their staff in combat. Combined with their immense physical strength, Pangoro's staff assault can send a dump truck flying. It can sense its surroundings using the leaf coat on its back. They have the abilities Sap Sipper, Mold Breaker, and Unburden. It has a signature move called Bamboo Beatdown, a 90 base power move that is a fighting type move that also deals grass type damage. Pangoro is one of my favorite Pokemon, so making it green and chill would make it go from my 10th favorite to my, like, 7th favorite. I'm very proud of this one. It's an idea I had since regional forms were introduced, and I finally got to see it fully realized. Now I want to turn a classic Pokemon into a classic concept. I love making evil Pokemon versions of fairy types and vice versa. In fact, this won't be the only one in this video. Since I started this series, I've always wanted to make a regional Togepi based on a rotten egg. What if this Togepi hatches too late and becomes toxic? It'll look mean and disgusting. Very simple. We'll take inspiration from this iconic evil Togepi face from the anime too. I mean, the eggshell is just going to be the same, so just a round egg. I added the signature toge, or spikes in Japanese. Devilish face and cracked egg, but realized it's literally just an angry togepi. What's the difference in evolution here? So I decided since this is a defected togepi, how about its spikes never fully bloomed when it hatches? Since when a togepi hatches, its spikes face inward for a few seconds before combing outwards. It also makes the egg look uh, more evil somehow. And the rest is the same, but with an inverse pattern. I finally added some cracked eggshell on it, so it's not clean and proper. It doesn't care about cleanliness. Then I gave it this disgusting green color. I rarely use the word disgusting and green in the same sentence. The patterns are secondary colors instead of primary. Beware, Togepi, the rotten Pokemon, a poison dark type. 
When pollution and heat surrounds a Togepi egg, it hatches without hope and luck. The shell is filled with despair. Togepi is said to be an omen of sadness. It is fueled by anguish and pulls practical jokes on its enemies. It does not actually have the power to cause harm, but wishes to do so. In the past, people would secretly place a Togepi in the vicinity of their enemies in order to conjure bad luck. Folktales of this Pokemon's bad luck have led it to be mistreated, but it is in fact very loyal to its friends. It will consume garbage, keeping its surroundings clean as a result. The spikes on its head are very poisonous. It has the abilities Hustle, Poison Point, and Weak Armor. This has been another Pokemon I wanted to create for a long time. It's just an obvious idea. The Togekiss lines are practically angels, so I wanted to contrast absolute good with Pokemon that sound like they're truly evil. This Togepi may be the most malicious Pokemon in existence, which is super funny to me. I said we'd get more evil doppelgangers, so here it is. Cutiefly is one of the cutest Pokemon in existence, one of my favorites. I wondered what if Cutiefly was a nuisance and aggressive and evolved into a completely different Pokemon, something quite the opposite of Ribombi. The Cutiefly line is based on the Bee Fly, specifically the cuter genus of Bee Flies like this one. So how about I base my regional Bee Fly on the darker species and make it evolve into a more intimidating kind of Bee Fly like this species, Lepidophora? Lepidophora? I'm not an entomologist. A hunchback bee fly that looks like it's imitating a wasp, basically. In fact, that'll be the whole idea of the line, that it's deceptive and trying to look stronger than it is. I'm gonna combine this with the aesthetics of Victoria-era street punk, a 19th century European ruffian or thug. And the cutie fly will look like a little pickpocketing lad that'll evolve into something dangerous looking like a gang leader, one that looks tougher than it actually is. As you can see, it's a cutie fly with a crooked nose. He's gotten into street fights, he has angry eyes and scruffy hair, a stripe like a convict, but also a bee fly. Wiggly, non-majestic legs. God, cutie fly is cute. Then it's all up to the colors to finalize the look. Grays and browns, very Victorian, almost like it's from a golden era cartoon. But honestly, I felt the concept was once again just a personality shift, so I gave it an old-timey cap made of fur. Ribombi has a scarf, so this hat will become the material that becomes the scarf of its evolution. Now it really looks like a little lad selling newspapers on the street or pickpocketing tourists. If you haven't noticed, its eyes are, uh, exclamation marks? Cause this cutie fly buzzes loudly. Check out cutie fly, the bee fly Pokemon, a bug dark type. Cutie fly obnoxiously buzz around, stealing valuable possessions. It is able to sense aura, allowing it to find those who hoard the most wealth. A swarm of cutie fly will drown the streets with noise. They're attracted to gold, and their leader commands them to bring back some to their base. Cutie fly will attack using their sharp proboscis. They are seen as a nuisance, but will bring shiny presents to trainers they are close to. They have the abilities pick up, shield dust, and pickpocket. I think cutie fly is like in the top five cutest Pokemon in existence, so making another one with a little hat is fine by me. I also like the color scheme. By the way, if you didn't notice, I am sick, so that's why I'm sounding a little bit nasally. Let's make the evolve form. Now we're starting off by giving it the long proportions of a hunchback bee fly. Facial patterns like Ribambi, but more sinister eyes. It ain't a fairy, it's an evil bug. So the eyes help showcase this, and it'll take some time for me to understand the kind of hat it should wear. Again, it's not really a hat, but just long fur, like its scarf. Throughout the process, I'm trying my best to give it mutton chops. Once again, actual stripes to make it look like a bee or wasp, but also makes it look like both a criminal and an old-timey cartoon character. I always thought Ribbon Bee would fit perfectly in a 30s Disney cartoon, so this guy would be the villain in an animated short. I finally decided to give it a drooping top hat, with antennas sprouting from the bottom. Nothing special about the wings. I like the contrast of the bug being ugly, but having relatively pretty and delicate wings. Same color scheme on his Prevo, but now it looks really complete on this guy. The patches complete the piece too. I love this man. Take a look at Bombeezle, the bee fly Pokemon. From the family of flies known as Bombolids, or bee flies, and Bamboozle, since it tricks others. Bombeezle leads a swarm of cutie fly that collect objects for them. They are enticed by the dust that Bombeezle produces. Bombeezle is covered in dust that makes others lightheaded and easier to manipulate. Rain and wind wipes the dust on its body off, so it prefers to stay in the dark. They are very stingy and won't give their underlings the share they deserve, but will devote themselves to loved ones, sometimes even giving them all the possessions that they have accumulated. They have the ability to swarm, shield dust, and pickpocket. I'm a big fan of Pokemon with big personalities, and this guy seems like a goon. Very classic cartoon kind of vibe. I mean, considering the stereotypes, this would definitely fit in a short from 100 years ago. Finally, I have an idea that I'm surprised we don't already have. When you have a Pokemon based on a tree, why don't we have a regional form that is based on another tree? 
Okay, we already have Alolan Executor, but I'm talking about another one, a Bomba Snow. It's a combination of evergreen trees and yetis, so how about we do a regional form based on Bigfoot and Redwoods, or any other tall coniferous tree. I love when the proportions of regional forms are completely different than the original. So I'm gonna make a tall grass ground Obama snow. Turns out many countries, including Spain, have myths of walking hairy hominins. Now there's an ethnic group called the Basques, which can be primarily found in Spain's Basque country. And in Basque mythology, there exists a hairy hominid called the Basahan, which are thought to have built stone structures, protected livestock, and taught humanity agriculture. This myth could have been a folk memory inspired by our early human contact with Neanderthals. But what if in the Pokemon world, the myth was real? And there was a Paldean Obama Snow in the north who used their ground typing to shape the earth. This way we don't have to wait for another American inspired region to create a Sasquatch Pokemon. So we're making a long, calmer Obama Snow. It has a pointier head, a more amicable mustache. He's not fighting for his life in the cold wilderness anymore. He's more sophisticated. Its body is covered in sharp leaves, but the non-leafy parts are made of thick bark. The legs are basically the same, but a bit longer, combining the leafy parts so it's uh, more cohesive and less patchy. When it's uncolored, it really looks like fur, but adding the green really completes the idea. The browns make sense since we know what's under the original Obama Snow's fur, just like Snover has the brown bottom. Here is Obama Snow, the tall tree Pokemon, a grass ground type. In ancient Paldea, the settlers would fear the sentient trees that they encountered, but one day befriended them, in the process learning how to grow crops in Paldea's harsh lands. It is believed that these mythical trees were in fact Obama Snow. Obama Snow can live for hundreds of years, accumulating knowledge in the process. They plant trees wherever they go, restoring the natural way of the world. They will create tree mazes around their mountainous homes in order to prevent others from encroaching onto their territory. They are rarely seen today. Obama Snow is very gentle and will allow tiny Pokemon to live in between their leaves. They are able to shoot thousands of sharp pins from their arms with one swipe. They have the abilities Harvest, Grass Pelt, and Soundproof. It really seems like today we're simply making all the regional forms I've wanted to make since the beginning. I hope you guys like them. Perhaps enough to leave a like and subscribe to more videos like these. Make sure to check out the Calm Mind podcast Birdkeeper Toby and I host. Link is in the description, as well as my Twitter where I post sneak peeks for the designs like these. Check the description for the music I used, the t-shirts I made for you guys, and my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early. Or click the join button for the same rewards. Bye!